Broadcasting live from the Vegas Video Network Studios, just steps from the Las Vegas Strip. It's time to get on the right side of sports betting. It's time for the Odds Couple. Welcome to the Odds Couple on the world-famous Vegas Video Network. My name is Scott Pritchard. That's really all you need to know. <laughs> What makes this show odd? My co-host, Anthony Padilla. Oh, <laughs> All right, I'm just going to throw it back to you. Great. <laughs> hey, it's Friday. This is a crazy week. Major League Baseball opening day is only three days away. Today we'll be talking about Cinderella at the ball, the tournament that somehow doesn't matter, and yet at this point in a coach's career seems to be better for retention, for your job, and the streak. It's over. Let's get started with what say you. March Madness, 68 teams, three-week tournament. One team, one time will win it all. Is it overhyped? Is it overrated? I say yes. I'll tell you why in a couple of minutes. What say you? Uh, no, and I know why you're letting me go first, because you know that I'm going to make so many more valid points about why this is entertaining that you're going to want to back up your computer business. And you know, I like to sit at home in front of a computer and get my other computer booting up while this one's loading the stats from the earlier games. While everybody else is missing work, calling into work, at work on their phones or their iPads or their Kindles or whatever else new device came out on Twitter following the games, watching the games, enjoying the upsets, the Cinderella stories like the Florida Gulf Coast University squad, the Screaming Eagles, FGCU, taking on Florida tonight. All of that is fun. You can't overhype it. If you don't care about watching sports, yeah, of course it's overhyped, you know? Guys don't get the whole panty sale of Victoria's Secret. Women go crazy for it. Is it overhyped? No, but it's just for a certain audience. Just because you're not the audience for that doesn't mean that it's an overhyped situation. Relax. Loosen up the coat a little bit. I like that you got rid of the button-down shirt. Now kick back and watch a game or two. March Madness is overhyped, it's overrated. I think it goes back to, I think if you're a fan like, uh, like Anthony and you don't have a girlfriend and you need something to get emotionally attached to, then yes, March Madness could be Now hold on, do you. You, do you have a girlfriend at this present time? Right now, today, I, I would say no. Right, okay, okay. So, okay. so then if, if I don't have a girlfriend and I'm holding on to March Madness and you no longer have a girlfriend, what do you have left? Have you ever had a girlfriend? <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't matter. That's not what we're talking about. Oh, change the subject then, why don't we? That's right. But March Madness to me is a professional sports better handicapper. It's overrated. It's overhyped. We're talking about 68 teams. We're talking about a very small pool of games over a three-week window. There are no secrets. There is no value here. If you're a fan, yes, I get the excitement. One and done. Only one team wins out of the 68 teams. So I get it from a fan standpoint, but there are better things to bet a la women's basketball, WNBA. Why do you think it is the sports books will let you bet whatever you want to bet on March Madness, but they limit you to $100 to $300 on a WNBA basketball total? Now, the Miami Heat, they've been on some kind of a streak. 24 consecutive wins a week ago. I went on record as saying, forget the 33 consecutive wins by the 1971-72 Lakers. You know, that record, not going to be broken. Last week on this show, I said, listen, they're not going to get to 30 games. Now, they did get to 27 before they went to Chicago and lost. The Miami Heat streak is over. What say you? I, I don't know if I... We, we were talking about this earlier this week on the radio together, and I had mentioned how, you know, when LeBron was in Cleveland, I really liked him, and you wanted to root for him. And then the way he handled the situation moving to Miami... All of a sudden, he was a bad guy, and you didn't like him, and you wanted the Heat to I wanted the Heat to lose. I didn't want them to ever win the championship, and he enjoyed playing that villain role. But now, I think he's re-embracing you know, and taking ownership of wanting to be the good guy again. And I was kind of rooting for them a little bit to at least get the record, only because a, substantial records like that, and I'm not saying substantial in terms of you know, this is something that people really revel in, but... A, sub a substantial record of 33 games is not easy to accomplish. Obviously, it hasn't been done in 40 years. But when someone gets that close and it is a team that's high, a high-quality team, you know, you don't control your, your schedule. We talked about that. You said, well, yeah, you've got a lot of teams that, you know, it's not even the same. Well, it doesn't matter. 
you play the games you're given. And a 33-game win streak is impressive regardless of how you get it. The fact that they got to 27, impressive in itself. But I did find myself kind of rooting for them. At this point, they didn't get it. I think it is more beneficial that they lost because the playoffs are only, what, now nine games away? You know, and at some point, you know you want to lose just to get that off your shoulder, that monkey off your back because you can't, they were certainly not going to run the table. They're still not going to. They're going to lose again at some point. You know, I don't believe they're going to sweep every series going to the finals. So I think that loss kind of reminded them. And, and it was to a team like the Bulls who it's like, okay, well, they gave us some competition. We get everybody's best every night. But clearly, you know, now we've got to step it up in a different direction to gear our, our, our mindset towards, you know, winning the championship, which is what really they, they're focused on from day one. And if you, if you talk to LeBron or anybody, they all said that they, they weren't really focusing on the streak. If it happened, great, but it's not like it was a main focus. I think in today's world, especially in the NBA, I mean, we're talking about parity with a capital P on any given day. Any team can knock off another team. So I agree with Anthony. The fact that they won 20, 27 consecutive games is, is outstanding. I really don't think the 33 consecutive win record will be broken. I also don't think the second best record, 27 consecutive wins by the Miami Heat. I don't think that will be broken. But let's keep everything in the proper form. I was watching ESPN, and now you understand why I refuse to watch ESPN. Just for a five-minute snippet, and some talking head on that show was talking about the Bulls breaking the streak. That would be just like Mike Tyson losing to Buster Douglas. Are you kidding me? Buster Douglas, 1989, the odds were 50 to 1. Mike Tyson, you get plus 40 to 1 on Buster Douglas. So Buster Douglas was basically a 45 to 1 shot to win that fight. And yet the Bulls at home, even without Noah, on the money line were 250 plus two and a half as opposed to 45 to one. So a lot of these talking heads on the networks and or ESPN, they're very good talkers, but they're there for entertainment purposes, which has nothing to do with true numbers, odds, laws of probability. But see, now that's an interesting statement. I hadn't heard that. Was the without necessarily throwing them under the bus? You were probably watching this old house on PBS. No, I was missed that. What I was probably watching was a game, an probably. actual game, right, probably right. But this person were they a boxing analyst, a basketball analyst? They were with uh, Greg Anthony and some other. Oh, well, Greg Anthony, a former athlete, and it, this was just a a sports commentator. See, because what I don't not like, a boxing. What, what I don't like about that comment is you're comparing one fight where. In any one game, one fight situation, anything can happen, a la March Madness. Anything can happen. And but it's not like Buster Douglas was some chump off the street. He was. Well, he absolutely was. But he trained. He wasn't. But he was literally motivated look. because his father had just okay, passed whatever. away. But again, the, the point the is he was forty five to one. But they didn't he won the fight. I know. I give him. So that's credit. what matters. He but wasn't I literally understand, but they to, didn't, to, but they didn't go get example. him off the street. No. Yes, allow, allow me to elaborate on this. He wasn't some chump off the street. He trained for the fight, and he won the fight. It was one fight. If they fought 33 times, Tyson would knock him out, the other 32. When you have a streak of an amount, a lengthy amount of games, if you win 33 games in a row, it is not luck. Because at some point, you're going to be tired. You're going to get everybody's best every time out. If you manage to win 33 games, then you've earned it. Period. It doesn't matter what the scheduling was like. Well, I think you're kind of missing my point here, my friend, because I'm. We have the about, same point. No, I don't think so. And if, if we do, I have to change my opinion. Or just listen to what I'm saying. <laughs> no, what it has to do with the, the the commentator was talking about the fact that the Bulls, an average team today, snapped the streak was conducive to Buster Douglas beating Mike Tyson, and again, being a numbers guy, the odds for that fight, 45 to 1. The money line on the Bulls to win the game, a mere 2.5 to 1. So it was a terrible, terrible example. Scott, we have the same point. Is you that right? You just said that that guy was making the point that he was comparing the fight being comparable to if they beat the record. I apologize. I really wasn't listening to what you were saying. Clearly. So we might as well move on. But we're moving on to something that we have a lot of fun with here on the show. It is Spin to Win, where we take two teams... This week we have the Clippers heading to San Antonio, taking on the Spurs. Spurs are favored by four in this one. As you know, in this segment, we will spin the wheel, and each of us are forced to argue for whatever team that we get. And as you know, the smart better always bets with their head, not with Scott Pritchard. So if we can get to the wheel. <laughs> Who are the teams? 
Clippers and Spurs. All right. And Scotty gets. <laughs> the Spurs. Very good impromptu drawing. All right, the San Antonio Spurs, I was hoping I was going to, to be able to sell you on the Spurs. It's the easiest sell on the planet. This team, outstanding. I mean, I love the San Antonio Spurs. Pop knows best. They have the best coach on the planet, Greg Popovich. They have the best player, Tony Parker. Manu Ginobili, not bad. Tim Duncan, not bad. They have a great supporting cast. Leonard Green. This team at home, they have four losses the entire year. They're playing a Clipper team, a team that as good as they are, they struggle on the road. They do have some injury concerns, namely uh, Chauncey Billups. Check the injury report before you bet this game. The Spurs at home minus the four is a bargain. Tony Parker, he did hurt his middle finger in the game the other night, a one-point win against the resurgent Denver Nuggets. The San Antonio Spurs minus the four. Remember, this is a must-win game for the Spurs, and I don't put a lot of hype into must-wins, but this team at home, uh, come on, four losses. They're only favored by two baskets to win this contest. Are you kidding me? See the cashier. Yeah, see the cashier. And cashing your winning ticket on the Clippers because that's where it's going to be. And not just for the four points, but for the game. Look, all the same arguments as every week when we talk about the Spurs. It's an age team. And this is actually youth versus age. Whether they play or not, you're right. Popovich is absolutely, he knows what he's doing in the regular season. And this is the regular season. But it's the end of the regular season. More rest for these guys, whatever. There's more writing on it, in my opinion, for the Clippers. Because for the Clippers, this is a test for them to gauge where they stand in terms of the playoffs and how they're going to face up against a team like the Spurs. Because here in two weeks, if they match up again at some point, you know, that's when, it, when it's all on the line and it really counts. So they're already gauging themselves you know, to, to prepare themselves for that. The Spurs know how good they are. You know, you've got Chris Paul, who just, this guy is due for a contract soon. And max contract, it's got to be. He's been lights out all season. They call him Lob City for a reason. They're fun to watch. This is the new run-and-gun team in terms of excitement. You know, Blake Griffin and the magic that he pulls off uh, somehow three nights a week, four nights a week, which is ridiculous dunks. And they're, they're a fun team to watch. They're explosive. And they win games. So the four points, I think, is a testament to how good the Clippers have become, especially visiting San Antonio. So, again, not only will they forget the, forget the four, take the Clippers plus the four because they're going to win this game. Interesting what you say, talking about the San Antonio Spurs being an old team. The only thing old about the Spurs is their record. And the their fact, players. The fact that they, what they're proving. The average age is 36. Five NBA championships. Five. Five NBA what championships. What does that have to do call with the them, age? Call them old. Call me old. If I have five championships, man, I love proven winners. That's why I like the San Antonio Spurs. You have to look at this team. This is a, such an important game because they're a game and a half up on Oklahoma City, Anthony's team, to win it all. I'm saying I bet numbers. So I have the San Antonio Spurs at plus 220 to win the Western Conference. And again, I want that because I want them being seated one. The odds makers say what Anthony says, that the Oklahoma City Thunder are the team to beat in the Western Conference. You can only get plus 7 to 5, which is plus 40 cents on Oklahoma City. But I would rather have the Spurs, the number one seed, if they can hold off the Thunder. If I'm getting plus 220 and I have home court advantage in the playoffs, then obviously I have positive equity. I'll have uh, you know, choices, and that's all you can ask for. Put yourself in a favorable position come the moment of truth, a la the New England Patriots at home in the conference championship game at plus 5-1. to one. Didn't pan out the way I was hoping, but the idea is you have options. Well, but so, why not? They have history. They've got championships with that they team. They do. Right, Absolutely. which means it means nothing right now. Yes, it does. They, they didn't win those Tell championships. Tell that to the, the bookmakers, that, okay? That, look, Tony Parker, or I'm sorry, um, Tim Duncan wasn't 36 years old when they won those rings. Tim Duncan is having one of his best years ever. Are you sure? He's on the bench half the time. Do you only watch college basketball? Do you not watch NBA? Okay, Scott, I'm just... Do you only watch Florida Golf Coast? <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> the San Antonio Spurs, I'm telling you, this team, they need this game to continue to be the top seed in the Western Conference. And as good as your Clippers are, they suck on the road. All right. They're talking about a team that they had to prove themselves against an average, forget that, below average Mavs team the other night. 
Blake Griffin, Lob City, that shit works in LA when you're at home. When you're on the road playing a half court set, Blake Griffin, I love the guy, but he didn't have any lobs. He didn't have any dunks against the, the weak Mavs. I only say this, I'm a little emotional because I had the Clippers in that game and they lost in overtime. Blake Griffin had one basket in the last three and a half quarters. They're on the road tonight taking on a very good Spurs team. Good luck and good riddance. Well, and this is the problem, to say that they have nothing exciting. This is why you watch the games instead of sit in front of a computer. Then you would know how much fun it is to watch and know why this game is so important for them on the road. You're right, they're not good on the road, but again, this is that gauge for them to step it up. So that's why the Clippers will win this game. I am so happy that I didn't <laughs> have to sell the Clippers. It would have been a very short conversation. <laughs> Guys, we're going to go to break. And while we do it, I'm going to sell Scott on why he should get the Clippers tonight when he goes and gets his ticket. But we are going to take a quick one, go grab something to drink, come right back. You're watching The Odds Couple right here on the Vegas Video Network. Oh, oh, hi. I'm Kelly Clinton. <laughs> that stuff. I wonder if Joan Rivers is watching. Oh, oh, please. Oh, my God. Who cares? I don't have a different one. You know who watches this show? Wayne Newton. You got that right, Kelly. I think you're absolutely beautiful. And challenge a young lady. Five, six, nine, twelve. Donkey shit. More camera time for me. Hey, I wonder if Cher's watching. Oh, please. I have so many other things to do. <laughs> Woo! Hi, I'm Kelly Clinton. I'm the host of Talk Tales, and you're watching the Vegas Video Network. That was horrible. The world-famous Vegas Video Network. My name is Scott Pritchard, joined, as always, by Anthony Padilla. Great to have you part of the show. To reach out to us, email us at oddscouple at vegasvideonetwork.com. That's oddscouple at vegasvideonetwork.com. We would love for you to become a part of the show. Web-based voicemail. Go to our site, Vegas Video Network. On the right-hand side, red bar, click there. In the middle of the page, that green bar, hit start recording. Now, we also would love to field live chat questions, any concerns, questions you have about the world of sports, specifically sports betting, feel free to get dialed in with live chat questions. If you do miss us live, no worries. Check us out on YouTube, Vegas Video Network, iTunes, Roku. We're here live every Friday, Las Vegas time, 12 o'clock noon. I have to say that this is one of my favorite segments of the show in terms of frustration. Are you kidding me? Now, we kind of got into it a little bit earlier already, deeper than I wanted to, knowing this is what I was going to talk about, but that's okay. <laughs> There's never enough when it comes to this subject. And it is March Madness, and it's the Cinderella story. There's one every year. This year, it is, in fact, Florida Gulf Coast University, FGCU. And it's a great story. And you would only know this story if you watch the games and you pay attention and allow yourself to have fun with it. Look. Scott and I have different perspectives in terms of the way we watch sports. And really what it comes down to is I actually watch sports. He watches the numbers of the sports, of the games being played. Clearly, you can't find the value of the enjoyment factor of a team like FGCU if you're watching the numbers on the computer because it's screwing everything up. Because the team that should be losing isn't. And so you're just upset that that's what's happening instead of being able to watch a team with a young coach who is married to a Maxim, a former Maxim supermodel, met her going to an NIT game. They went to dinner at Taco Bell because he didn't know the area very well in Queens. She was cool with it. Here they are 10 years later married with three beautiful kids. It's a great story. You know, you've got a lot of players on there who believe they can take down Georgetown, which they did, having at one point a 19-point lead. That They believe they can go into the next game against San Diego State and win that game, which they did, again, having a 17-point lead at, at one point in that game. That is not just winning. That is announcing yourself with a strong presence of authority that we came to play. We are not just here to dance. Yeah, we're the Cinderella team, all right? But forget what the stepsisters say and everything else. That pumpkin ride home at midnight, I don't think you're going to have to worry about at this point because they are having so much fun with everything. Look, if it ends tonight against Florida, they're going to be just as happy because of what they accomplished. At the same time, you can make the argument at that point, well, they're in it to win it. Yeah, you should be in it to win the whole thing. But that's what makes this team so dangerous because of the fact that they're playing loose, they're having fun playing basketball and doing what they know how to do, and they're doing it their way. 
All of the pressure right now is on Florida. And I know my buddy Scott would love to comment on this because he wholeheartedly disagrees, but it doesn't matter. Again, Buster Douglas fight, 45 to 1. He won the fight. Sometimes the numbers don't say it all. Sometimes the story tells more than numbers ever could. Are you kidding me? Just enjoy it. I'm just upset that I did not bet Buster Douglas at 45 to 1 odds. As far as Florida Gulf Coast, are you really, are you kidding me? We're talking about a team that's won a couple of college postseason tournament games. Congratulations, okay? For Anthony to say that they play Florida tonight and they have a shot, I'm telling you they have no shot. The, the, the journey's over. And I, when it comes to handicapping, I couldn't care less who the coach is sleeping with. Okay, it might be a good feel-good story. Well, that's I don't the know. point. I don't know, but again, that has nothing to do with handicapping a game. No, it doesn't, but that's not what we're talking about. The point is, from the enjoyment level, that's why people like the Cinderella team, because of all the stories that are involved. Do they have anything to do with betting? No. But again, the intangibles that I'm such a big fan of, these play a factor in these games because of the level of pressure that's on these teams to win anyway. And when you're facing a team that you're supposed to beat, you know, New Mexico, two weeks ago against Harvard, <laughs> that, they, what were they, 10 and a half point favorites? Yes. Harvard's never won a tournament game ever. Talked about it before, they're doing homework at timeouts. Who even had them in the game, let alone winning it? It's stupid, but they won the game. And everything plays a factor. Well, the, again, I think people only remember what they saw most recently, and I think people overreact. So again, Florida Gulf Coast, listen, they're, they beat Georgetown, they beat San Diego State, congratulations. But Florida, wow, there's a new sheriff in town. We're going to see what happens later today. I expect, expect Florida to win going away. The point spread, wow, 13 points should be the first half line. Let's get to my segment, Are You Kidding Me? We're talking March Madness. I want to talk N-I-T, spelled just the way it sounds. National Invitation Tournament. Why? Why do we have a National Invitation Tournament? We already have in March Madness 68 teams, really 68 college teams qualify for this big dance, this big March Madness. We're talking about glorified high school players. I love the NBA because it's at the highest level. I'm tired of watching kids, high school players in college, missing 10-foot ducks, missing layups, making bad decisions, and the coaching not much better. So forget, I mean, really, you, you're going to take, take time watching the 68th or the 65th or the 47th best team in college basketball. Let's make it worse. Let's have an NIT tournament for all the, the have-nots. Then we get to watch the Iowa Hawkeyes, Baylor, BYU, and Maryland. These four teams are in the NIT. This Final Four takes place at Madison Square Garden, New York City, Tuesday this coming week. And if you win it all in the NIT, congratulations. You're the 69th best team in college basketball. Are you kidding me? No, hold on a second. You understand, I, I mean, there's, with what you just said about players, you like NBA because these guys know what they're doing. Well, without those kids missing those shots in high school and college and developing their game, you wouldn't have them in the NBA. So you've got to add some appreciation value to those games. Not much. Not because, from a betting standpoint. Well, well, actually not in, from a fan standpoint either because well, you're talking about they gonna... 330 pro basketball players on the planet. How many, take your best college player, what are the chances of him making it in the NBA? You have about 10, maybe 20 people out of 7 billion people on the planet that are good enough to play at the okay, highest but Scott, level. Where did those players come from? They didn't go from middle school to the NBA. They had to go through high school and college. We're talking about a very, very small number. No, but where did every NBA player come from? Not they every. A lot of players come from Europe, come from France, come from overseas. Okay, but, but yes, they came a lot from of overseas. These, did they go to players? high school and college overseas? Yes, yes Okay, of course. so where did they? You think they went from grade school to the NBA? No, that's my point. <laughs> you appreciate the NBA players, but you don't appreciate when they're developing their game. I'm just saying the level of play that I'm used to seeing. Well, I hope it it's better. I, I would hope, of course. Of course, the NBA is a higher level of play than college. We have a live chat question. Thanks for getting me out of this. <laughs> yeah, Jackpot has an interesting comment. She says, the beauty of the NCAA, or NCAA is that these kids play with such heart and grit and joy. The NBA is full of a bunch of overpaid, arrogant jokers. 
Are the NBA players better? Well, duh. <laughs> yes, but NCAA is way more fun to watch. <laughs> I didn't know we had female viewers on this show. Wow. This hey, is but that was a great comment. That, no, that, that was a great comment. Everything about that she was kinda great. She kind of sounds like my, one of my ex-wives. I know that, Scott is, <laughs> I know that Scott's going to have a lot to say negative about that. So before he does, let me address the fact that was beautifully stated. Well, I, I don't know about the – I think you were, you were a little harsh on the NBA players. I, I think, again, you have both. You do have some that ruin it for the rest. I, I think there's a lot of guys in the NBA who play the game the right way. But very strong point about, you know, these are kids that are they're leaving it all on the court. Well, from a spectator standpoint, I respect what the college players do. I'm talking specifically about the level of play. Just because a kid has heart and desire doesn't mean he has any talent, okay? So I'm tired of seeing the level of play, glorified high school players playing college basketball. I don't need to watch Florida Gulf Coast play basketball when I'm used to watching the San Antonio Spurs in basketball or the New England Patriots in football or the Los Angeles Angels in baseball. I like to see things at the highest level. There's a huge, huge difference between college basketball and playing at the highest level. That's all I'm saying. That's it. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> Either way, it's still fun. It is fun. This bantering is always fun. All right, we're going to move on, and this is the part of the show where Anthony and I together put money into your pocket as we put you on the right side. All right, the right side for me this week, I'm going to make this real easy on everybody. All right, first of all, let's go back to last week. Uh, winner and winner. No, I no. lost, but yeah, thanks that's for right. reminding me. Thanks. Whoops. Well, definitely winner. Which is why you should listen to me on this segment. Because of the fact that I take into consideration the intangibles. Forget the numbers sometimes. Yes, numbers are always important. Numbers don't lie. They're a strong threshold and foundation for placing bets and doing those sorts of things. But there's also certain things in certain games, certain times of the year, that are far more important than just the numbers on the piece of paper. Because if that were the case, the Bulls, I'm sorry, the Heat would have never made it to 27 games. They would have lost 10 games ago, all right? Now, in this game, this week, I have the Charlotte Bobcats, which are more like kittens at this point. I think they've won, they've won 17 games all year. So there's not much value in this team. Heading to New York to take on the Knickerbockers, where, you know, this team is, it seems like they're on a bit of a resurgence to the Knicks of old. Now, I'm not saying... They're that quality, you know, you don't have the superstar name. I mean, you do have superstar names, but they're not necessarily living up to the Knicks of old in terms of stature. But record-wise, they're doing very well, and it seems like they're figuring some things out. And a home game right now, at this point in the season, they're favored by 14, which is, is a pretty steep Hill to, I believe it is still 14, is that correct? Yes, it is. That's a steep hill to climb. I mean, that's, that's a pretty big victory if you can pull it off. And you are facing a Charlotte team, again, that really, it, it, this is a dismal year. Last week I had the Orlando Magic, which, I mean, they're the worst team in the league. But Charlotte is not far behind, and I think they are now fighting neck and neck for, for that worst spot. But in this one, you do have Charlotte going with not much into New York, and New York is still playing for a lot. And... They're at home. They always take pride playing in the Garden. And I'm not saying that Charlotte's not going to be up for the game, but at the same time, I don't see the Knicks necessarily winning by 14. That's, that's a pretty steep margin, again, to try and cover. So the right side for me in this, the Knicks will win the game, not by 14. So the right side is the Charlotte Bobcats plus 14. Underdogs are oftentimes undervalued. You've heard me say this many, many times. Anthony going with a double-digit favorite which defies logic, but I'm not going to question or argue with the guy. You cannot argue with success. Don't ask me how he does it, but the guy's a freak. I'm telling you, I can't believe what he's done ATS against the spread. This is not easy, friends. I've been doing it for 30 years professionally. People pay me for my opinion. They pay me handsomely. I have to tell you that we're talking about a sports fan in Anthony, and we're talking about a professional sports better. Last week, Anthony was right. I was wrong. I don't worry about having one game fall out. Fact is, you can document this. Pro football, 60% winners ATS, 
from the show and for NBA as well. But it, I'm, I marvel at what he's been able to do against the spread. So now let's take a look at a game tonight, the Oklahoma City Thunder on the road taking on the T-Wolves of Minnesota. Oklahoma City, uh, a game and a half behind the Spurs. It's going to be very interesting because in about a week they played the Spurs in Oklahoma City. You'd have to expect that the Thunder would win that game by defending their home court. So this time of year, you have a lot of playoff type games. They slow it down. They play a half-court set. Every possession is magnified as you're trying to jostle for position. And I, I look for a low-scoring game. All right, It's amazing to me how many games in the NBA today fall well under 100 points. The total for this game is 202 and a half. Minnesota, I, I love their coach. And they have a couple of really good players on this team, but they have been hit with injuries. I expect that this game is going to go under the total based on the fact that Oklahoma City will look to slow things down, play good sound defense as they prepare for the upcoming NBA playoffs. This total is simply too high. Play the under and see the cashier. And, and a testament to you, you absolutely, I, I joke with you a lot about, you know, sitting in front of a computer all day, but there is something to be said for your winning percentage and your, your career. You've got, you've got a lot of success and numbers are important. And folks at home, look, I, I joke about certain things. I, I downplay certain things. But it's not, I mean, is it luck the way I pick teams in comparison to you? It's just different. Because I, it's not, yes, I'm a fan, but I also watch games. I watch a lot of games, every sport, and I watch the details. And I pay attention to all of this other stuff. And I look at it from a different perspective. But it doesn't mean that the numbers aren't important. Okay, Stats are always important. Trends are always important. And the stuff that Scott bases his opinions on, absolutely crucial and vital if you're going to do it for a living. I can, again, I don't have the pressure. <laughs> I am the FGCU of picking sports teams. All right, he is the Florida. He is the Duke. There's a lot more writing on those shoulders, and that's why they are big shoulders. But he does well carrying it. So I, I just want to clarify that, you know, we just have different perspectives on, on the way we approach picking these games. What are you doing this weekend? A lot, man. Besides watching ready, basketball. I, I'm getting ready for opening day. Opening day is officially Monday, but of course you have the two games on Sunday, you know, to kick it off, which I don't like that. That's confusing because Monday is still considered opening day, but really shouldn't the day the first game is played be considered opening day? You would think. You would think. So it's like a pre-opening day, opening day. So that's Sunday. And uh, tonight, of course, the, the rest of this weekend, my show over at LVH, which once again, you'll be gracing our stage tonight. Excited about that. I'm looking forward to it. Comedy After Dark, Anthony Padilla. 10 o'clock, LVH, great show. I'm excited about being a part of the show tonight. If you're in Las Vegas, check that out tonight. Tomorrow night, you can catch me on The Strip. LA Comedy Club at Bally's. Check out my plays on VegasInsider.com. My site is PritchardsPicks.com. For my good buddy, Anthony Padilla, my name is Scott Pritchard. Have a great weekend. We'll see you next Friday. See ya.